All right, so welcome everyone. This is the first Discord TED Talk. The topic is going to be an introduction to competing. Uh, my name is Sway, obviously, and I'll be giving this talk. The reason why I wanted to give this talk is because a lot of people ask the question in terms of what they should be doing or how they can, how they can get into it. And it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's not as intimidating as some people make it seem. It's just a matter of getting the gear that's required for whatever discipline you're getting into and then jumping right into the registration and then just going showing up to a match. That's all it really is. Um, so if that's all you're here to really hear, then <laughs> you're welcome to disconnect. But if not, I'm going to jump right into it. So real quick, high-level agenda. I'm going to introduce myself, obviously, go over what it is from a competition perspective to consider uh, throughout those four or five different slides, and then towards the end, open up to a Q&A like I mentioned. So brief introduction about myself. Uh, I was a college rifle shooter. That's actually the first time I shot a gun was a 22 air rifle. I think it was that Walther that's there right now. Uh, it was really entertaining. I don't know what I was doing, but at the same time, I was excited to do it. Did that for a year and a half. I think I earned like rookie of the year, one of the years, something like that. But since then, I just haven't done anything. So there was a bit of a gap in terms of what I was doing. I was casually renting as well as going out with coworkers who happen to have guns. So that picture right there is me going out with uh, one of my managers who reintroduced me getting back into the... Uh, shooting realm so for about six years i was between renting and shooting other people's stuff and then for more recently in the past few past few years i got a little bit more active in terms of what i wanted to do and that included competing and obviously being more engaged in the online community uh which started with obviously the subreddit and being online with reddit but then drove into this discord which has been a tremendous blessing in terms of getting it set up and seeing the conversation and the new learnings that i've definitely been introduced to uh, for the past, I think, a couple of years now. It's 2019 when we started it. Okay, moving on. Jumping into the disciplines for what kind of competition disciplines to consider. Uh, you'll see a handful of different types and names thrown around. IPSC at a high level is probably the more popular one. That's the international stage for shooting. Uh, I don't remember what it stands for. International Practical Shooting something, maybe. Uh, but anyway, USPSA is a child organization of that. It is specific to the U.S. region. So when you think of them, just think of them, one of the, they're one and the same, basically. They might have some minor tweaks in terms of what rules they do or don't allow. Uh, and also the targets are going to be a little different. USPSA uses the humanoid-looking target, and then IPSC just uses that, uh, what is it, like an, a trapezoid or something? It's, it's a weird shape. I don't know what, what shape. Seven sides to it. Septagon. Anyway. You also have Steel Challenge, which is a related organization to USPSA. It's mainly just steel plates. Uh, knockdown Steel, you have a stage of just literally just knocking down steel plates. And I'll just, there's no audio to this video, but it just goes through the different examples. And then you have other options as well in terms of what kind of disciplines you can consider. I've shot bowling pin shooting as well, which is kind of fun. Uh, but at the same time, it had some limitations to what you can and can't do. And then there are other ones that I've heard about, but I haven't necessarily shot in uh, directly. And that's IDPA, which is a little bit more concealed carry driven, that kind of thing. There's also like armored divisions as well. So you're fully plated up with gear and you're lifting big tires. And it's a lot more active than you would see in the USPSA. USPSA is more so just pure sport, speed, and gaming the system as much as possible. Multi-gun, obviously, you could shoot. There's, there are matches that shoot handgun, rifle, shotgun handgun rifle, shotgun rifle, and then handgun shotgun, I'm pretty sure, whatever variety of those, and I'm sure there's more ver uh, variations of that as well. And then obviously your trap skeet and clay shotgun matches too. Uh, if you do want to get engaged, which is what I'll jump into after, but there is a, you just reach out to your local matches obviously and then figure something else, but I'll get into that in a bit. Going to the match flow itself, what to expect? So there's key, I guess, periods for, uh, to, for a match. There's a setup period which, which could happen the day of or before depending on how big of a match it is. Then there's a registration period where people, there's a window where people show up. You, you're very likely to have registration beforehand but some people show up and they register the day of. Uh, there is a risk with that because you might not necessarily be able to shoot that day if they're full but most of the time they'll squeeze you in or some people will no show so you'll be able to fill that in. <clears throat> but anyway, once you're assigned your squads and the stages have, and the stage, not the stage, the match brief has been given, meaning whoever's running the match, they'll give like high-level rules, safety considerations, what to do in a, in a 
what to do in the event of an emergency. Um, then every squad will go out and conquer, basically. Uh, from that point, they'll go through a stage review. So they'll read the script. It's a, it's a very small, like, few sentences in terms of what to expect for the stage. Uh, there are some nuances to consider in that, so I want to make sure that you're listening carefully. And this is more specific to, like, USPSA. Steel Challenge is pretty straightforward. You're standing in a position, and you're just shoot as many plates as possible, as fast as possible, and don't leave any standing. That's it. But for matches like USPSA, there will be a stage brief uh, explicitly stating where to start, your hand positions, the status of the gun, whether it's loaded in your holster or unloaded on a table or all mags on barrels, whatever it is. So that's that'll be key in terms of how you plan your stage. <clears throat> and then you'll have a set of commands. There are a set of commands before the course of fire and then after the course of fire. Before the course of fire, it's just when you're on the line and ready to go. And then after the course of fire is when you're done shooting, what kind of commands you, you can expect. And that's what this little clip here is going to show in a bit, so I'll, I'll actually play that right now. All right, going hot, make ready. Are you ready? Stand by. If you finish the loading, show clear. If clear, hammer down on holster. Range is clear. So hopefully you guys can hear that audio. If not, I'll be happy to reiterate it. But uh, essentially, there's a, depends on who's the RO, but there are like official terms in terms of what's he say um, before the course of fire and after the course of fire. But generally, they'll be within the same vicinity of what you saw and heard in there. And then after the after you're done shooting, after the shooter's done shooting, you'll have to reset the stage uh, and score. So or score and reset, preferably in that order, obviously. But You'll go around, <clears throat> as a shooter, you can go around going with the scores as well if you want, if it's USPSA. But you'll tape up what's needed, you'll repaint what's needed if, if it's still challenge, you'll reset plates and all that kind of stuff. And then the next shooter goes up and then they go through the whole thing. Altogether, it, depending on your skill level, you're probably shooting for a minute and a half tops and then you're resetting for other people as well, then waiting around. So that's one of the downsides to competing. It's a lot of waiting around, unfortunately, unless unless the course is really, unless the matches run really smoothly. but it's it's just part of the game unfortunately but you get to learn and really experience what other people are doing and how they're stage planning and that kind of stuff so that's that's part of the engaging part of it too so you, if you do want to just sit around and ignore everything then you're not going to have a good time so that's one thing to consider and then you move stage and at the end of the day you break down stages if you stick around and you want to help out uh, that obviously helps the match directors and people who are uh, sitting up and sticking around to do it because otherwise they'll just do it on their own so it helps and I've primarily just a caveat I've primarily shot local matches I haven't shot like national or regional or area matches yet um, that will be next on the plate. I just haven't gotten a chance to register for them. All right, what I want to go through real quick are some misconceptions about competing. So it's a very small community that might hear some of these misconceptions, but they do come up. So as you start getting into it, you might hear it from other people if you haven't already, or maybe you have some of these ideas as well. Looks like some of it got cut off, but it's all good. So going down the list here, it's you have to be a pro to compete. I mentioned this early on. You don't have to be a pro to compete. In fact, like you, it's encouraged. There's a ranking system, but aside from that, you just need two fundamentals to compete. One is you need to just know how to shoot a gun, like presumably well. Uh, you don't want to just waste ammo and burn time and just waste everyone's time. You want to be able to hit some targets, whether it takes three or four shots, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you want to be able to engage targets between anywhere from three yards up until maybe 30 yards maybe 25 yards tops depending on the stage setup but that's ideally what you're looking for more commonly so you can engage targets most of the time within 10 or 15 yards and then depending on where you position yourself in a match or during a stage you might have to engage at a farther distance like 25 yards so it depends but for the most part under 25 and you're good to go so if you can hit something fairly consistently it doesn't have to be two inch groups at 25 yards with a handgun that's not that's not the case i mean if you see that an a zone target or even a steel plate that's 10 12 inches it's a pretty pretty big hit zone so just consider that uh, you need expensive equipment to compete this is true i started with i think like a 50 dollar rig from amazon it is a flimsy black inner and outer belt system setup and then some cheap plastic holsters basically for my uh for my glock and mags i shoot production actually in jersey we're all going to be pretty much shooting we're going to need probably around four or five mags but in production specifically the just the 
division I compete in, uh, you're limited to 10 rounds, so it's considered a low cap, low capacity division. Uh, same with single stack. Single stack, you're, depending on which, if you're major or minor, it'll be eight rounds or, or 10 rounds, but you, you'll want to make sure that you have the pouches needed to shoot and reload, and maximize your time. Otherwise, you can shoot until you're in slide lock, but that's just bad tactic. But anyway, you don't need expensive equipment. You just need bring anywhere like around seven mags to a match. This way, if one fails, you have one just in case. Or if, for example, you're on the line, you start shooting and then during your engagement you notice that one of the poppers wasn't reset you're gonna have to reshoot so you want to make sure you have enough ammo obviously which i'll go over in a bit but instead of wasting people time trying to reload you could just grab an extra mag that you already had so you're good to go uh, another one to consider is competing has no real world application you'll hear this pretty often uh, where it's like there's no benefit to competing why bother and this is a pretty bad mindset to have and it was funny because I was in the Frank Proctor class training this this weekend, and he brought this up as well, where he was of that mindset too. And then he would, he got to competing pretty regularly, and then he would see the various benefits of getting into it, and then he'd switch his mindset, which is funny enough, because he would compete with like some of the top players in the world, and he noticed that there's a it's a whole different ball game than just combat shooting, because obviously coming from his background, he had a different experience with what, what it meant to be a shooter. So he really took up that marksmanship aspect of competition shooting as well as that um, speed aspect of being able to shoot well, fast, and be able to move as needed. Now, not to say that all competition shooting is applicable to real-world scenarios, so like different combat or concealed carry or self-defense scenarios, but the, the fundamentals of competing is shooting. That's literally the base core of it. So if you know how to shoot well, which you do when competing at a high level, you, you'll want to make sure that you refine your skills to the point where you are shooting well um, to get to that caliber of whatever performance level you're looking for. But that's that you take that ability to shoot really well at distances and small groups for, for to maximize your points and that kind of stuff. And that's the core of any other self-defense scenario. Uh, obviously, there's tactics to consider in, in self-defense and combat situation so that's one thing that you're not going to pick up from competing that's not one thing you're you're not going to know where your targets are in advance you're not going to just preemptively gauge one two three four five targets at once um so i'm not advocating to to say that they're one and one but there are some key skills to build that and if you want to shoot a gun and shoot a gun well uh, start competing because you're going to refine those skills and you're going to pick up on what to improve on as you go Next misconceptions and myths. I'm going to go with the next two really quickly just so we can move it along. But you can only shoot certain guns in competitions. Also, competing is a waste of time, money, and ammo. Uh, I won't touch on the last point. Pretty much reiterated that with the real-world application. But uh, you, can cert you can shoot certain guns. I mean, there are scenarios where you only shoot certain guns in, in certain scenarios. Like I said before, there are certain guns I shoot in my division, production. I can't shoot a raced-out gun with every sort of feature and whatever that's attached to the gun or enhancement made to the gun single stack division you can literally only shoot single stack division it's meant to be a 1911 based division so there's there are depending on the discipline if you want to shoot your ccw gun and it's got an optic and a magwell and a flared magwell and some enhancements to, to other features of the gun then with you're welcome to do that you'll just be in a carry optics division so there's a place in a division for you to shoot and if uspsa doesn't accommodate your your gun which is unlikely then I'm sure there are other competitions to consider that might be more uh, fitting to what you're shooting, for example. Uh, but there's competitions dedicated to 22 LR, so if you just want to shoot a 22 pistol or 22 uh, rifle, you can do that. You can't do that at USPSA. You need a minimum 9mm just because you need to knock down plates. But Steel Challenge, for example, you can shoot 22 LR. People do that with revolvers, with other handguns, and autos and... Like 20, uh, 1022 takedowns are pretty common as well. So th there, there is opportunities for you, depend doesn't matter what caliber. Uh, there are opportunities for you to get into it and compete. Which leads me into the equipment aspect of this, what you'll need, and what to consider. So as I mentioned before, depending on the discipline or what competition type you're, you'll be riding, running, uh, that'll demand what you're looking for from a gear perspective. Uh, but the essentials are going to be you need a belt, you need holsters, and I mean, sorry, you need a belt, you need a holster, <laughs> and you need mag pouches to carry your bags. Some divisions might not require a holster. Some divisions you don't need mag pouches. You're just loading from the table. 
um, or you're just at a low ready. So that's that to consider. Like you're not going to holster a PCC, for example. But anyway, so it depends on what you're shooting. We'll will demand what kind of gear you're looking for. But that's basically the essentials from a shooting perspective. And then obviously you want the appropriate gun and the ammo you're looking for. And then ultimately, as always, I and ear prep. Some beneficial things to have. You want to have a range bag to hold all your ammo and any spare parts and that kind of stuff. Uh, food and water, depending on the type of day, time of year, you want to have some extra gear, like some things to keep you warm or um, just some extra snacks if you low blood sugar or whatever. You just want to eat something during the match because they do get pretty long. I think they're anywhere from like four to six hours, depending on how many people, how many stages, that kind of thing. I mentioned maintenance tools, spare parts for your gun. If you just want to have some parts for your gun, I've never brought a spare part for my Glock. I shot that for uh, quite a bit. Now with my new gun, I have some spare spare parts that I'm considering. Uh, it's going to be my new dedicated gun, and there are some known parts to break, so I'm going to make sure that I have those just in case because I might mess up a stage and have a broken gun, but I'd rather just nix that stage than chalk the whole match, so that's something to consider there. And then comfortable attire. Depending on the time of year, you can wear jackets, but you want to be able, to, obviously, to unholster your gun and get to max. So if it's a inner jacket that's warmer and then an outer jacket to just really defend while you're standing around that kind of stuff, then by all means, wear some gloves. I shot in January and December, and it was absolutely brutal. Um, so <laughs> learning lessons for next winter. Um, hand warmers, and they have ja they have like long sleeves and jackets that that are attach the batteries and keep you warm so that's pretty cool so it might be an investment to consider uh, I forget who makes them maybe Milwaukee but anyway those are some key equipment to consider last but not least yeah Milwaukee forks uh, registration so how do you actually start registering for an event the easiest way to do it is just contact your local clubs see if they have matches that's how I got involved into this uh, I was over in Lakewood and the local club there happened to have some small matches and that's how that's what really introduced me and then I got to know the ROs and RSOs there and they introduced me into like the more local matches that are a little bit bigger USPSA style still challenge knockdown that kind of thing so it helped expand what I'm looking for or you could just use these links so steel scoring is one of the bigger ones uh, they'll have most of the events happening locally and then practice score is a little bit more regional and I think it's used globally I'm pretty sure but you'll be able to find matches it's a, it's a broader search basically and then Glock obviously has their match registrations on their website and then IDPA has theirs and I'm sure there's more for all the other types of disciplines there are so uh, that's something to consider so if you want to get into it best bet contact your local club or just look on these events create an account it's free um, you don't pay anything at least for steel scoring and practice scores clock I'm, I'm not sure if you have to pay in advance I'm pretty sure you do uh, but the other ones you basically pay the day of unless it's something like a big match and then obviously you pay your entry fee um, but that's it that's that's the gist of it uh, it's meant to be very high level rudimentary things to get you into into the game so if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know and I'll give you the uh, the voice permissions and you guys are welcome to ask the question otherwise you're welcome to disconnect on green day hold on all right you should be able to uh, you might have to reconnect I think that was a weird thing with with voice hold on let me move you first bang bang all right here we go all right cool uh, do any of them require you to have any kind of holster training before you actually take like do any of these tournaments no actually so you just need the holster and then most of the time they'll have I mean, I mentioned before you have to have like basics of understanding for how to shoot, but knowing how to holster, I mean, holster, reholster, and take out of the gun would be essential, but it's not required. Most of the time they'll have, at least for the local matches, they'll have like a introduction for new shooters. So just to go through the commands, make sure you're well aware of what the commands are and 
make sure you're safe and unholstering the gun and that kind of stuff. So they're pretty thorough, and if not, you just got to let them know you're new, and they'll basically just, you'll, you'll just look to see what other people are doing, but there's no formal training required beforehand. You're not expected to show that you're proficient in anything. Um, it's just a matter of that you're safe in unholstering and reholstering. on any other questions all right I'm, uh, I mean I'm always available so you guys are always welcome to ping me and ask any questions you may have and I'll happy to reach out and we could talk more about it but aside from that uh, jukes yeah that's intentional so I'd rather have one person if they have questions, uh, just let me know and then I'll give them the permissions to talk, but I'm not going to open it up for everybody because it's recorded. I'd rather have it controlled. But Jukes, if you have questions, let me know. Alright, with that said, I will end the recording and I'll be good to go.